133 now, uh, what, what's the magic level for Draghi? Axel, February the 7th, the euro dollar was above 135 when the ECB had the policy meeting and at the press conference afterwards he made pointed remarks about the euro being fully valued and also the downward pressures on inflation being caused by the euro at that level. The market took that as a signal, pushed it down to the 128 and now we're back up at 133 as we're coming on air. We got another ECB meeting on the 5th of September. I'm just wondering if we're around those 134, 135 levels again, given that the, the Eurozone economy is fragile, external to Germany, whether Mr Draghi may pull the same stunt again. What, what, when you say pull the same stunt, what, what, what's he going to do to head off this rise? He's just going to use strong words, send it back down to 127 as it did last time, or 127 and a half, or is he actually going to do something a little no, bit more be, drastic? No, be pure rhetoric. And yeah. you know what, there was a survey at the tail end of last week, an ECB survey of analysts, which is suggesting that inflation in the Eurozone next year would be substantially below 2%. Now, we know that the ECB's target is close to but below 2%. If you've if you're got these predictions already, mm. which were presumably taken before the latest up leg in the euro dollar, it may well be that he can leverage off that to point out further downward risks in inflation, which would be contrary to the ECB's mandate, but consistent with the rise of the euro to the current levels. It may well be that he can hide behind the possibility of disinflation, if you will to put a top on the euro again. Mm -hmm. And you can't blame him. I mean, we had the Fed's Fisher in Germany last week saying that he was terrified of what yeah. was going in France. I mean, with, with that in mind and the possibility that Draghi could do something at this September 5th uh, meeting, or at least we'll hear something from him, is the euro ever going to make it to 135? The market may want to push it up, and at the moment the market seems to be ignoring the fact that the Federal Reserve may actually start tapering in September. That will come back, as yeah. we've discussed before. Yeah. But it, it, the market is unravelling a long dollar position. It's gradually unravelling it. It may well push on to 135, but I know some big guys in Asia, across Asia, Middle East and Far East, who are looking to fade the euro short up there because they're of the opinion that we may get a rerun of February the 7th. Um, let, now we've got you, I want to, want, to, want to ask you very quickly about sterling as well. And of course, it fits in with, with uh, euro dollar and the Fed uh, and, and tapering. Uh, the Breaking Views headline today, or one of their pieces, sterling flirts with safe haven status. Now, we've talked about this before. Do you think sterling is a safe haven? I think I read the article and I thought it was very, very well argued. My come, I come at it from a, from a different angle. I come at it from a market perspective. Do I love the sterling at the moment? The UK data looks really nice. Wonderful. But I know what Mr. Carney wants to do. He wants to keep interest rates low for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the US is going to taper in September. And then how will the market look at it? Historically, myself included, I want to get paid for holding the pound because I know sterling is the widow maker. Yeah. When you're longer sterling, she goes up by the staircase and down by the lift shaft. And if it's going to go down the lift shaft, I want to get paid for taking that risk. If I'm not going to get paid, I'm not going to hold it. And however buoyant the data looks, however nice the UK might look, up here, 155, 156, I wouldn't be going freshly long of the pound. In fact, I'll be looking to get short of it. But I look at it from a different perspective than the breaking news commentator.